Science and religion are two of the most powerful human activities in the world today. The authority of science, in the Western world at least, is almost unparalleled and the vast majority of the world are currently religious. This brings up an interesting, but by no means novel point. That is, what is the relationship between science and religion? On the one hand, we have biologists like Richard Dawkins who claim that science and religion are in perennial conflict. Yet on the other hand, we have mathematicians such as John Lennox who argue that science and religion are complementary. As a researcher in the history of science myself, my interest is in trying to understand as best as possible the proper relationship between science and religion. So why is this important to know? Well, as I mentioned earlier, science and religion are two of the most powerful human activities in the world today and they largely impact on how we view the world and interact with each other. Science and religion shape much of our world view, whether you're for or against any one of them. They inform our conceptions of ourselves, our morality, the nature and construct of the world and of the universe. And they also play into our more concrete institutions, such as education, politics, and even our jobs. Now, unfortunately, it seems like there's been a lot of confusion in regards to how these two fields interact. And while the scholarly study of science and religion has been alive and hugely productive over the last 60 years, much of this research hasn't really filtered down to everyone else. In these videos, my aim is to bring that field of scholarly research into the open forum for anyone to be able to pick up on. And one of the best areas to start doing this is by delving into the history of science. So in these videos, we'll take a look at modern historical research in attempting to answer questions such as, was the Galileo affair really science versus religion? Did Darwin's theory of evolution deal the final blow to the Christian faith? When did science and religion as we know them today actually develop? And who were the X Club and why are they so important in the history of science? So what is the history of science? In order to answer this question, we need to first understand a bit about what history itself is. The political scientist and historian E. H. Carr, in his book What is History, argued that history is an ever-changing field of study. He said that our answer to the question what is history, consciously or unconsciously, reflects our own position in time and forms part of our answer to the broader question what view we take of the society in which we live. He goes on further to say that the historian then is an individual human being. Like other individuals, he is also a social phenomenon, both the product and the conscious or unconscious spokesman of the society which he belongs. It is in this capacity that he approaches the facts of the historical past. In these statements, Carr is telling us that when one does history, they are doing it largely as a product of their own time and in their own society and that affects the final product. In his book History A Very Short Introduction, Professor of Medieval History John H. Arnold suggests that history is an argument about the past and present and he says that arguments are important because they allow for the possibility for change. This is absolutely a true statement because the facts of history are not simply laid out in order ready to be presented, they have to be painstakingly constructed and within this process of construction the historian's ethics, ideas, philosophies and experiences will come to bear in the final product. It's for this reason that Carr relates history of all things to fish on a fishmonger's lab. He writes that the facts are available to the historian in documents, inscriptions and so on like fish on the fishmonger's slab. The historian collects them, takes them home and cooks and serves them in whatever style appeals to him. All these descriptions apply to all areas of history and so when we focus in on the history of science, we can summarise, although not exhaustively, by saying that historians of science primarily attempt to present arguments about the past based on the available evidence. They too are, however, a product of their time and place and so produce narratives that are interesting and or important to them. Modern historians of science are well aware of this natural bias 
and so attempt as best as possible to present narratives that are objective and fair to the events that they seek to describe. And since the early to mid 20th century, there's been a big shift in how they work. Whereas before, focus was largely on great scientific ideas and heroic figures such as Newton, Copernicus and so on, today, historians incorporate the social and cultural context of the period of study and their subjects, and they also bring to light areas that we may not traditionally think to incorporate, such as economics, politics and war, and seemingly mundane stuff like the role of homes in the formation of experimental science. As a consequence, when reading scholarly works on the history of science, sometimes it seems as though there's barely any science as we would usually perceive it. David Knight in his book The Making of Modern Science remarks that this may sometimes look like history of science with the science left out. However, as he then rightly goes on to point out, this view is a bit too narrow and this is because in reality it's only when we understand the social and cultural context of the times that we can begin to fit scientific and subsequently religious affairs into their proper places. Lastly, one of the leading historians of science today, John Hedley Brooke, has famously argued that in effect the relationship between science and religion is none other than complex. In the scholarly field this has been dubbed the complexity thesis although Brooke himself thinks that complexity is not so much one of many optional theses, but rather a necessary truth that underpins all historical relationships between science and religion. And so in this light, future videos on this subject will also be underpinned by this idea of complexity, as it will serve to best capture the historical interactions between science and religion that we aim to unpack. As quoted by Brooke on your right, Serious scholarship in the history of science has revealed so extraordinarily rich and complex relations between science and religion in the past that general theses are difficult to sustain. The real lesson turns out to be complexity. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this introduction video to the scholarly study of science and religion. Please do like and subscribe and I'll be back with more videos soon.